This video is sponsored by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, build your online presence with Squarespace. Hey everyone, I'm Ace of Clay and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. Today I'm making a book accurate Gandalf the Grey from The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Now this was a trickier project than you think because Gandalf doesn't really have that many descriptions throughout the books. There's actually only a couple paragraphs. But his long white hair, his sweeping silver beard, and his broad shoulders made him look like some wise king of ancient legend. In his aged face, under great snowy brows, his eyes were set like coals that could suddenly burst into fire. All that Bilbo saw that morning was an old man with a staff. He had a tall, pointed blue hat, a long gray cloak, a silver scarf over which his long white beard hung below his waist, and immense black boots. Gandalf looked at him from under long, bushy eyebrows that stuck out further than the brim of his shady hat. So I had two ways of doing this. I could either make a literal representation of Gandalf just with those descriptions, or I could make one that was more interpretive and kind of put my spin on it. But for this project, I really wanted to stick to the text as much as possible, and I think I did it. So anyway, I took that description and I made a larger sculpture this week. This guy stands almost two feet tall when he's done, and I cannot wait for you to see the entire process of me making him. And before we get started, don't forget to grab your Winston and Photographer plushes. These are both available right now at Ace of clay.com they come with hang tags with their entire backstories on them the photographer has a zipper mouth that opens and closes and they're both really nice plushes so go ahead over to aceofclay.com and grab them before they're gone i'm also autographing them if you want so just check the box when you check out if you want that aceofclay.com link in the description box below and now without further ado let's make gandalf the gray <laughs> All right, let's get started. I'm balling up a piece of aluminum foil and covering it in some Super Sculpey Living Doll to create his head. Just wanna get the basic shape figured out, get a little bit of a jawline on, and go from there. Once I've got the shape down, we're going to poke out his eye sockets with this large ball stylus. Make sure they're even, and then start attaching his nose. And I think this is like the first realistic head sculpt I've ever done on this channel where this is just going to look like a normal human man. I'm going for age 67 or so. We'll see if I, if I get there. But now we're just going to give a little bit of a bulbous tip to his nose, adding that extra clay and smoothing it in with my spoon tool. Now I'm going to pop on his nostrils and blend those in too. And using my super poker and super small ball stylus tip, I'm going to carve out the nostrils themselves. Now I used some pre-baked balls to create his eyes, and this makes it much easier when you're sculpting the area around the eyes because you don't have to worry about ruining them or anything like that. You can just work around them and they won't get smashed. Now I just wanna fill in some of that tissue around the eye in the eye socket area and start building up the features. I'm not using any reference photos because I don't want to be inspired in any way. I'm already inspired enough from Peter Jackson's Gandalf with Ian McKellen, so I really don't want to be influenced. So I'm just kind of giving my best shot at a 67 year old man. Now we're just building up the under eyes here and the eyelids a little bit. And I want to give him some hooded eyelids. As you age, you know, your eyelids start to sag sometimes over your lids. So we're just going to pop those on. And I do want to give him that look of his eyes being set like coals, deep set eyes, all that. But I also want to give him a kind look. Doesn't say anything about him not being nice. His story seems pretty epic and kind hearted. So I think his face should reflect his character. Moving on, I'm going to shape out his cheekbones with my fingertip. To further set his eyes into his face, I'm gonna give him a larger brow bone. When adding pieces of clay to your sculpture like this, I always like to start small. You always need less than you think you do. So, and it's always easier to add more than take away, in my opinion. Now 
and I just popped on a little piece of clay there to create some frown lines. Now for some nice deep forehead wrinkles. Now using my spoon tool and a couple other tools, we're going to refine some things around the eyes. Now I want to bring out his cheekbones a little bit more, so I'm just adding some more clay and blending that in. Being careful not to ruin what I've already done. doesn't look too bad let's move on to his mouth area just adding some more clay here to create the nasolobial folds and at this point I realized that he looks a lot like Ian McKellen <laughs> which wasn't my goal but that's just how it happened Now it's time to make his mouth. I'm starting with the bottom lip, adding that on and blending that bottom edge of the clay in with the rest of his chin. Now separately I'm sculpting his upper lip area with my fingertips like so and then I'm going to attach it right above that bottom lip. Sculpting this all in one piece makes it way easier to blend and it looks much more natural than if you were to just sculpt the lips completely separately. Using my super poker, I'm adding some wrinkle details to his lips. Lip wrinkles go horizontally and vertically. And to make him look a little bit older, I'm adding some more wrinkles here and there. And there we go not bad for an hour now moving on I sketched up this really bad drawing to just get his proportions right and we're gonna start making the armature out of this really thick aluminum wire I'm making a base at the bottom and then basically making my normal armature just on a larger scale to reinforce him and give him a really solid base I'm covering some of the wire in some epoxy sculpt To really secure the arm wire that I added to his torso, I'm adding some epoxy sculpt around that as well, and then I'm going to pop in his neck wire. Epoxy sculpt cures like concrete. It is the best thing ever. Now for his body, I was originally going to make it out of either epoxy sculpt or super sculpty ultralight, but it's just going to be covered entirely in robes, so I'm using this wire mesh that I got from Michaels and I'm just shaping out the torso like so and then sort of sewing the back and front together with some floral wire. If you ever use this stuff, be careful because it will cut you. And there we go. His Armature is pretty much done. Let's wait for that epoxy to cure. All right, we're gonna take a quick break from our video to talk about our sponsor, Squarespace. Whether you're a big business, a small business, a freelance designer, or a sculptor like me, Squarespace has everything you need to showcase your brand, sell your products, and more. I've been using Squarespace for over five years now, even before they started sponsoring me, and I could not be happier with my experience. Their products are so streamlined and so easy to use that managing my website, aceofclay.com, 
Instagram is truly a breeze. Some of my favorite features include the portfolios and galleries. In my line of work, I have to show my work to the world, and Squarespace's beautiful portfolios allow me to do just that. I have an online shop where I can sell stickers, plushes, posters, sculpting supplies, and more, and Squarespace makes everything so easy. And I'm not kidding when I say that. I can track my inventory, print shipping labels, I get notifications every time something sells. Everything I need is right there in the platform. You can even sell digital downloads. They really have everything you need to start selling online. And at this day and age, if you're an online business, you've got to have a social media presence. And Squarespace allows you to integrate all of your social media platforms into any page of your website. So if all of this sounds good, head on over to squarespace.com, start a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash aceofclay to save 10% on your purchase of a website or domain using my code aceofclay. And then once it cures, the next day I'm just going to sew on some more of that mesh for his bottom half. I should have just used a bigger piece to begin with, but it's okay. All right, now on to his robes, the biggest headache for me because I am not a tailor or a sewer. So I'm just sort of trying to figure out how this is gonna look. In the book, it says that he's just wearing a gray cloak. So we're gonna give him a nice baggy robe and then put a cloak on top of that. So here's the basic shape. Let's compare his head to it. And at this point, I kind of thought his head was too small for the body. But once I tightened up that fabric, everything was fine. Now to stiffen his fabric, instead of using Mod Podge, I want to try this golden soft gel matte acrylic medium. It kind of looks like lotion. This was recommended to me by my friend Dom Draven. He's also an artist and a sculptor if you want to check him out. But I'm just brushing it onto the surface. And my review of this stuff is that it worked fine. It doesn't harden to the hardness of Mod Podge. And Mod Podge is essentially Elmer's glue. So you can use Elmer's glue instead if you don't want to buy Mod Podge. But anyway, this stuff... It's the fabric stayed softer and it left a white residue all over everything, which was kind of annoying. I didn't really care because this is Gandalf the Grey. He doesn't have to be perfect. And I end up fixing it with my airbrush later on. But just keep that in mind if you use this stuff. I did like how easy it was to manipulate the fabric once it was saturated and it really stayed in place. So I really liked that. And I also liked that I could hold the fabric in place using some painter's tape and I could just peel that off the next day. With Mod Podge, I don't think you could do that because you'd basically just be like decoupaging the tape to the fabric and it would never come off. So here I am binding him up a little bit and then we're gonna wait 24 hours for this to dry. And this also has a 30 minute work time, which isn't the greatest. It, 30 minutes goes by a lot faster than you think, but I made it work. And the next day I'm removing the tape and look at that, it stayed perfectly in place. And like I said, it's not super hard, but it's hard enough, it's not going anywhere. Now I'm gonna go ahead and jump to his hand. And this is the type of project where I didn't have a good plan when I started. I thought I did, but that's the reason why I just keep jumping from thing to thing because I need to prove to myself that this is gonna look good in the end. So I have to keep making other parts to make myself feel better. Hence why I'm jumping to the hands and I'm not working on more of his robes. I'm like, hmm, maybe if I throw his hand on, it'll look better to me. So that's kind of why I'm bouncing around like this. But Here's a full hand tutorial. I know a lot of you have been asking for this too. So I haven't done, you know, showed the whole hand process in a while. So here you go. <laughs> and I'm using Super Sculpey Living Doll for the hands. I didn't put any armature in them because the fingers are thick enough. I'm not worried about breaking them. And I'm starting with the thumb and ball of the hand first. Then I go to the middle finger. Then I do the index finger, the ring finger, and then the pinky. <laughs> the hands a little bit, I'm adding some snakes of clay to create veins.
there we go we got his free hand now let's go ahead and attach the hand and I'm just bulking out his arms with some aluminum foil again I was gonna use epoxy for this but what for you're not gonna see them this is gonna work just fine I'm wrapping them in some fabric and the foil will also allow me to reposition the arms if I need to later on now for his cloak and yes there is a difference between capes and cloaks cloaks go over your arms capes just cover your back so this is a cloak it's a half moon shape that I'm cutting out there and putting over his shoulders now we're just jumping to gluing that arm on I attached his hand with some epoxy sculpt and then we're gonna go from there and I'm gonna wrap his other arm with some more fabric yes this totally looks like crap but it'll be fine because the cloak is gonna cover everything I was originally gonna give him really long baggy sleeves but I didn't want to bulk him out anymore so I kept it nice and tight with this wrapping technique now I'm just brushing on some more of that acrylic medium and as you can see there is a white residue on the parts that are dried that's kind of annoying but at the same time I'm using a product in a way that it was not intended to be used so I guess I can't complain about that now I'm just gonna glue the front and the back of his robes together and call it done after some more acrylic medium and the glue that I'm using for all the fabric pieces and for his facial hair later on is Fabri-Tac the best glue ever for gluing fabric or gluing really anything to polymer clay <laughs> after painting up his cloak I'm attaching it like so and then getting it into the position I want it to be in And he's got a silver scarf so I'm gonna go ahead and make that now out of some more silver fabric and I'm just rolling over the edges gluing them with some Fabri-Tac making it look nice and neat and let's pop it on see how it looks and we'll dirty it up and add some refinements later on now I'm just going to nick up his robes a little bit and we can start painting his head after it's baked I'm using some army painter war paints I'm using them as washes just sort of getting them into all of his wrinkles rubbing off the excess this color is called I think barbarian flesh I want this paint job to be pretty natural Gandalf doesn't have a home he is constantly wandering so he's got a little bit of Sun so I'm gonna darken his face a little bit give him a nice little sun-kissed glow darken the areas around the eyes and really bring out his features some watered down blue under his eyes and in different areas just to give him his face some more dimension to further heighten what I've already done I'm going in with a little bit of a red wash here and there going in with a very very watered down barbarian flesh to just go over everything and blend all of my painting together and then finishing him off with some highlights now I just got to paint his eyes starting with the whites 
a very tiny brush, being very careful. And then I'm going with this nice gray color for his irises. I thought gray would be fitting. And my favorite part of painting eyes is painting these little reflections in there. I like to do two of them in each eye. Just gives him a little sparkle. There we go, there's Gandalf without his beard. Now let's just glaze the eyes with some Americana triple thick glossy varnish and start gluing on his beard. The color I chose for his beard is this silvery white because in one description it says that his beard is silver colored, in another description it says that it's white, so I just kind of met Tolkien right in the middle. Fabri-Tac is an amazing glue to get hair to stick to your polymer clay sculptures. It seriously makes the hair melt into the clay almost and looks like it's growing right out of his face. description it says that his eyebrows stick out further than the brim of his hat so I'm gonna take this literally and give him really long epic eyebrows <laughs> And speaking of his hat, let's make that next. I'm using some Super Sculpey Ultralight and rolling out a four millimeter thick sheet of clay with my Ace of Clay roller with thickness rings and then punching it out with a cookie cutter. And I'm gonna make it nice and pointy just like the book says. Once the shape is figured out, let's go ahead and remove some clay so there's room for his head and then get this in the oven. And once it's baked and cooled down, I'm going to brush on some Fabri-Tac and then stretch some of that robe fabric over it. And I want to make sure the Fabri-Tac is on really thin because I don't want any bleeding through the fabric that will leave a dark spot that will never go away. So just careful about that. I do get a couple dark spots, but it's not nothing crazy. Now I'm just stretching the fabric on, cutting it to size, and then adding the fabric for the brim, sticking that on and then cutting it to size and stretching it over piece by piece. going to add some hair to the sides of his head only so the hat sits nicely and we're going to brush some acrylic medium onto his scarf to his staff. Using some more of that thick aluminum wire, I'm creating the general shape that I want. The books don't go into too much detail about his staff other than saying it looks like a walking stick, so we're just going to take that and run with it. Peter Jackson actually added the crystal to his staff in the movies. He doesn't have a light up crystal in the books. And to create a nice swirly, viney texture, I'm adding some snakes of clay and blending those in with my spoon tool and super poker and explorer tool later on.
And once his staff is done and baked, I'm going to sculpt his other hand that will be holding the staff out of some cos clay. Making it out of cos clay so that it stays flexible and I can just insert the staff easily without worrying about his fingers breaking. I swear cos clay is like the ultimate polymer clay cheat code. we go there's his hand holding his staff and now I just want to airbrush his robes to cover all of that white residue that the acrylic medium left behind this was a pretty easy straightforward process I had some highlights I had some shadows and then of course some dirt along the bottom just to you know he travels everywhere again he doesn't have a home he's always wandering around and shout out to Fairies and Fancies and again Dom Draven for all the airbrushing tips and how to get this stupid thing working correctly. I swear this airbrush is the bane of my existence, but I will conquer it. I don't care what it takes. <laughs> now we're just airbrushing his hat blue to match the book description. last airbrushing step I'm going to paint his staff and I'm just gonna pretend that after this or during this process it didn't clog 50,000 times now we're just going to paint his hands with a paintbrush <laughs> my comfort zone over here and add a little bit of a wash And using my brush again, I'm going to dirty up his hat a little bit. All right, let's get his staff in and see how that looks. Then let's pop on his head and his hat. There we go. Now let's fidget with his eyebrows a little bit so that they're nice and curly and pointy. Now say it with me. And he's done! My book accurate Gandalf the Grey is complete. Let me know what you think of him in the comments.